Kazakhstan has chosen the multi-vector integration. Its trends, collisions and prospects are coming up in the single market program. Today in the program, new investment trends, identification, Eurasian option, school of the market from Kilet. In which countries can kumis be drunk? Hello, I'm your host, Yerke Bolan Bihmohanbet. You're watching the Single Market Program. In 2017, the volume of investments in Kazakhstan's economy amounted to 8.75 trillion tenge. This is 5.5% higher than in the year of 2016. At the same time, the volume of investments increased in 13 regions of the Republic. Our economic expert, Alexander Galiev, will tell us about the sector of the economy that is the most attractive for foreign investments today. I propose to begin with the review of investment trends of the mineral resource industry. But looking ahead, I believe that this industry will not be the only one with high investments. The share of the mining sector in terms of the total volume of investments in fixed assets among all other industries in Kazakhstan amounted to more than 62%. Oil and gas industry. Investments in the fixed assets of the crude oil and natural gas production sector grew by 19% and 4% respectively. Manufacturing industry. The investment in this sector is based on 2017's result, which showed that it increased by 4.7%. The share of this industry in the total investment volumes, including other sectors, was 20.5%. And now let's see which segments of this economic sector were most actively invested into last year. Most of the borrowings were used for the production of furniture. Here, growth has reached almost 2.2 times the previous year. Good indicators for investment volumes in such industries as pulp and paper production, production of coke and refined petroleum products, and the production of finished metal products, excluding machinery and equipment. In general, if you compare the investments while taking into account the nature of the sector, such as the usage of raw materials and non-raw materials, there are interesting trends to be noted. The investments in the fixed capital in the non-extractive sector, excluding investments from the state budget, increased by 9%. Meanwhile, the growth was almost 40% in the capital city of Kazakhstan, Astana alone. Investments in the fixed capital per capita last year increased by 4%, one-tenth of a percent in the Republic. The leader in this indicator was the city of Atrao. Here, growth totaled 12.7%. The highest investment was led by Atrao with a total of 12.7% growth. And in conclusion, the state of the world economy continues to improve, and this serves as a favorable environment for increasing the potential of investments in Kazakhstan. And we'll see the first interim results in July at the end of the first half of 2018. That's all from me, Alexander Galiev. The Eurasian Economic Union will create its own labeling system, and this process and the conditions of integration requires the participating countries to be consistent in their actions and compliance with common requirements. I asked the competent experts how will marking affect the movement of goods, and what place does the introduction of digital technologies have? In February this year in Almaty, the countries of the Eurasian Five signed an agreement on the marking of goods using identification tools. This project document provides for the creation, on the territory of the EAEC, a single digital information system for the qualification of goods. This innovation would ensure the integration of space, storage, transportation and sale of products that are included in the information system and equipped with a special control sign. Control sign. It is a hinged, small plastic material, a system mount, that if it is removed, you will not be able to apply it again. It is registered in the system, so the wholesaler is not allowed to resell it. You cannot simply withdraw a product without this being fixed. This is what the process of marking does. The unified marking system functions using the RFID tag, QR code and barcode. Kazakhstani developers in 2016 showed how electronic users could bring benefits to ordinary consumers. They presented the mobile application WIPON. 
With its help, the QR code can be considered as the whole pedigree of goods. The user just needs to put a smartphone on the product and Whippon will immediately detect a fake. We have developed a very convenient way for introducing content into our system. Within an hour, the manufacturer could bring all of his products to our base, where it can be scanned and provide information to consumers. The application identifies the product by checking its own database. That is, where did it come from, who was its producer or supplier, when it was manufactured and under what conditions the product should be stored. Review of such information serves as reliable information against counterfeits. This perspective was shown by the results of the pilot project on the use of the mobile application Whipon. With each scan, the system sends data to the State Revenue Committee, and they can see which store is being scanned for what counterfeit. Then they can personally check and remove all counterfeit products from the shelves. The introduction of a unified electronic marking system in the EAPS will ensure the business to comply with all rules and norms of fair competition. This includes the field of intellectual property rights protection. And for the state, product identification will serve as an effective tool for the fight against the black market. In turn, market experts will be able to control every stage of the movement of goods throughout the integration space. And this will create a platform for monitoring, planning and synchronizing actions on which stable work in production and trade requires. If you're a conscientious producer, it is profitable for you to protect other producers and to make other manufacturers diligent. Otherwise, you will never be able to compete with an incomprehensible commodity. You will never be able to compete with the shops that are located in private apartments. The introduction of a unified labeling system takes time. In addition to coordinating actions, countries need to resolve financial, technological and production issues. The initial experience, as it may appear in practice, already exists. In 2016, a pilot project for chipping fur products was launched at the EEMP. This is an attempt to make business more civilized and thereby improve the welfare of business and, as a result, improve the welfare of the country. Some of the EEA countries have begun to implement this system in the framework of national programs for the digitization of their economies. For example, in Belarus, more than 20 types of goods have been registered with marks of identification. And in Armenia, there is already about 50 types. In Russia, the electronic identification of goods will be launched before the beginning of the summer. The first focus will be both pharmaceuticals and tobacco products. As for Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, they will start this process later. The partners in the integration union have agreed that each country will carry out monitoring and on its basis will decide on what groups of goods electronic marking should be introduced. Experts say that the introduction of the new system will not significantly affect its price and will not become an additional burden for entrepreneurs. For genuine manufacturers, electronic marking will serve as a good measure for development. According to preliminary forecasts, due to the use of digital identification, a manufacturer could increase their turnover by an average of 20%. Last year, machinery was included in the top list of the sectors of the Kazakh economy that showed the greatest growth. The increase in its production amounted to 5.6 percent. This result is good, given the multi-sector nature of the industry. Mechanical engineering is not only the production of a wider range of equipment, but also the production of a variety of equipment, including electrical equipment. Our correspondent, Ilmira Nigrieva, visited one of the Almaty Enterprises, which is the leader in the profile market. The Kilet machine building plant is located in the southern mega city of Kazakhstan in the city of Almaty. The company specializes in the production of equipment for heating, water supply and ventilation. The assortment of products is quite extensive, about 100 varieties, but the biggest volume is the production of boilers. 
мы делаем на сегодня. Today we are doing about 6,000 electric boilers with a capacity ranging from 4.5 kilowatts to 1,000 kilowatts. Last year we have mastered new products for gas boilers. 1,200 boilers were produced, and this year we are planning to make 10,000 boilers. То есть такой большой рывок. The company has such opportunities thanks to the modernization of production. The enterprise carried out this process in stages. One of the biggest acquisitions is the laser apparatus of the Swiss company Bystronic. It costs 1,500,000 euros. This is the only place in the CIS where this equipment is used. Thanks to the laser installation, the company not only increased labor productivity, but also improved the quality of the product. This is a very complex system with a metal warehouse that allows the designer to send drawings directly from the designer's computer to the laser. From the warehouse, he takes the necessary sheet and cuts it. Another valuable acquisition is an automated painting line. The robotic device performs several operations. It washes the surface of the finished product. It protects it from corrosion and increases the resistance that is covered with a layer of phosphate. Finally, at the final stage, the products are painted and all parts are polymerized. In the spring of this year, the technological park of the plant will add two other modern equipments, which are the equipment for rolling and welding of the boiler body. These will be brought from Italy. It is a machine that produces a boiler body in 12 seconds. This is a very high-performance machine with very high speed. In order to present its products and expand the geography of exports, the enterprise takes part in international exhibitions, presentations and trade missions, where Kazakhstan enterprises are represented. You have to be competitive globally because others also come here. We are building our opportunities for the market that we are forming. Optimal price quality ratio allowed the plant's products to find their niche in the export market. Today, the equipment that the enterprise produces is in demand in the countries of Central Asia and the Eurasian Economic Union. Some markets are represented locally on a regional scale. For example, the Siberian Federal District in Russia. Well, this is our neighbors, Novosibirsk, Tomsk and Kemerovo. Because they are our nearest neighbors, it is convenient for us in terms of transportation costs because of the close proximity. Nevertheless, last year the plant expanded to the regional market of Russia, which is located quite far. For the first time, products from Almaty were sent to the Far East. It seems to be far away, almost 6,000 kilometers, but nevertheless our boilers were transported in good condition. Because of the attractive price, they're in demand and sales are going well. The state has included the enterprise in the roadmap of Business 2020 programs. The company is not only export-oriented, but it also spends significant funds for its modernization. We received a 6% loan on the roadmap for replenishment of working capital, which is important for us and we received a 7% loan for the purchase of fixed assets. This is very good support. The fact that the products of the plant have found its stable niche in the export market is evidenced by the company's extensive distribution network. This network covers about 150 firms that operate in different regions of Kazakhstan. In addition, there are partners representing the interests of the Kazakh company in Russia, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Ilmira Nigreyeva, Anatoly Valyuski, exclusively for the single market program. Before we finish our episode, let's talk about the spring Nowruz holiday. It is celebrated by the Turkic people. One of the specialties of the festive holiday is sour milk drinks prepared according to ancient recipes. For example, shubat and kumis. For a long time, these products in Kazakhstan were produced exclusively for the domestic market. But today, shubat and kumis are boldly exploring the export niche. Who and how did the Kazakh producers manage to enter the foreign market? Elena Bakherova did her investigation. Kumis and Shubat, which are sold under a Kazakh brand, found their niche in the export market. And today these products are included in the list of products presented in trade missions and international food exhibitions. For example, in World Food Exhibition in Moscow. 
I read that Leo Tolstoy suffered from an unspecified disease and he drank kumis as part of his treatment. I remembered my homeland. I used to live in Kazakhstan. Deliveries of national sour milk drinks to the export market are carried out by both large and small farms. Tolu Kushmanova is a farmer from the Pavlodar region. Her farm, Sagip, has been making komus since 1996. To increase production and export, the farm initially increased the number of animals. And only then she opened a shop for processing. Thanks to the automation of the production process, the farmer managed to bring the production volumes to a level that allowed them to expand the geography of sales. We supply kumis to Astana, to Ikibastus, Karaganda and Aksu. Then we are also represented in Russia. There is a store that opened in Moscow. They came to me with a proposal and I sent them both kurt and komus. One of the new export routes from this agro enterprise is China. And since the potential of this market is very high, the farmer must constantly increase production in order to export more products in this particular market. There are good prospects for the export of another dairy product, Shubat. During the trade mission in Dubai, the products of the Bolashak Cooperative from Mangasta region were presented among various Kazakhstani goods. Local camels give milk with fat content of 2 to 2.5 percent. Our camels give 5.5 to 6 percent. Entering the market of the United Arab Emirates is in plans for the future, but the export of Shubat to the countries of the Eurasian Economic Union has already become a reality. Sadiq Dauletov heads the largest camel breeding farm in the Almaty region, called Daulet Biket. The demand for Kazakh Shubat began to grow actively in the year of the establishment of the EAPS. We started selling Shubat to Russia three years ago. Today about 20 tons of products are sent monthly and they still want bigger volumes. The popularity of Kazakh Shubat is due to two factors, the demand for an environmentally friendly product, a healthy product in its high quality, which only uses raw materials. In this farm, milk is taken from single horned camels, Turkmenha Arua. At the same time, all requirements for product safety are observed here. We send the raw materials to be tested in the laboratory. Then we boil it at 90 degrees, then cool it to 30 degrees Celsius. After that, we add the leaven, and in 8 to 10 hours, the shubat is ready. Shubat is not the only product this farm produces from camel milk. The range includes yogurts and desserts prepared according to old recipes. Technology companies are constantly working on updating the range. One of the novelties is the production of dry camel milk. This product in particular will be exported to China and Europe. And according to the director of the farm, this is a workable plan. To compare, in Kazakhstan, a liter of camel's milk is 500 tenge, in China, 10,000 tenge, and in Europe, 12 to 15,000 tenge. The product will have high demand. The consumption of dried camel milk or goat milk is now becoming a popular trend worldwide. Popularity exists as companies are now adding them into chocolates, children's cosmetics and other cosmetic products. The raw material in the powder form is convenient for transport, storage and use. All the advantages of logistics and the high demand for a freeze-dried product were evaluated by agro-businessmen from the Karaganda region. A few years ago, with the participation of public investments, the world's largest factory for the production of dry mare's milk, Eurasia Invest LTD, was opened here. All raw materials for processing come from their own farm. After milking, the liquid is sent through the milk pipeline. It goes into a cooler tank and then it's cooled and pasteurized. After pasteurization, the product goes into production through the sublimation method. We have German sublimators. Milk is dried there, first frozen, and then dried. From one liter of milk, about 100 grams of powder is obtained, which absolutely does not contain additives. To restore the product into milk is very simple. Just add water. Today, these products are sold not only in the domestic market, but also in the foreign market. Part of it goes to direct suppliers in the Russian capital. In the future, the company plans to enter the markets of Japan, Korea, China, and European countries.
From trend to brand, it is possible to outline the export prospects of Kazakh sour milk products that are prepared according to traditional recipes. And the growing demand for them suggests that Pumis and Shubat deserve to be claimed as the national brands of Kazakhstan. That's all for today. I am Yerka Bulan Bihmuhambiat. Let me remind you that all our episodes can be watched on our website, www.kazak-tv.kz. See you in the next single market program.